<clears throat> What's going on, everybody? Friday Night Live. Let me know if everything's going good. Checking in. Tonight, we are building the Axial Rift kit, which I forgot. which we have right here. That is the plan tonight. Check in. Let me know that everything sounds right, working right, what not. Jesus, that was loud. Well, hopefully uh, well, my levels look okay. So must just have been me that was loud. Hopefully uh, all you guys are having a good time. Maybe, I don't know if some of you were at Axial Fest Badlands. It looked like it was a, a wet weekend so far one more day left don't know how the weather is going to be tomorrow but hopefully uh, any of you guys who made that trip are getting to enjoy some of it but speaking of axial rift kit night this was a last minute choice a last minute pickup for the stopped in the hobby shop and i've been saying that i've needed to get another rift since Mine has been relegated to um, R&D duty at work. So picking up. Uh, one thing that is worth noting is that, uh, so it's, it is sealed, you see. But there's actually two factory seals on top of each other on each one of these. So I'm guessing that this was opened up and maybe axle housings replaced or something like that. But yeah, there's double... Uh, factory seals on all four corners. I'm guessing that means updated parts. So, good stuff. We'll uh, find what we need right away, including the manual. While I have disassembled my previous Rift, you don't necessarily know the Rift like the back of my hand compared to some other Axial models, so. Trash in the bottom. Spares. Let's hope we don't need that. Let's find our first bags. I guess I can... No, we're not doing an unboxing. But we do need to, well, there's A bags and B bags. I'm guessing that's where we need to start. I'm going to try and make my way through this. To, man, that is a thick manual. Kind of surprised. We'll see how this manual is. Some of the last Axial manuals were not the best. We'll see how this one does. Just grab the kit today. Are you fitting electronics tonight? No. We'll see how far we get tonight. Um, but no, not. I won't be fitting electronics. So. That will not be the plan. We've got the first step is, of course, building differentials. Not the most fun part. But Axial used to have branded uh, bag tags. Surprised they don't anymore with this kit. And A1, A2, A3. We're going to open all of them because I believe we need all three. It does include diff oil. Bonus. Let's get our handy dandy DeWalt out. And we'll just take out the... 1520 and 25 tips right now. The rest of it probably not needed. Anyway, toss a Mamba X. Toss in a Mamba X. 2280 Castle. Lock the diffs and make it a 180 scale crawl. Did that in perform. Man, I don't know. It's not a it's not a great crawler platform. I mean it'll probably do okay, but you're looking at a trailing arm car and all that. Like I think if I was really trying to crawl, it might be some choices I would make differently, but I mean, it'd still be fun. Now, I don't know about that Castle 2280. I guess it depends on which one you're talking about, but I think one of the Castle slates would be a little low on oomph for a car this size. 
Oh, this one does. The kit does come with one locker. So we're going to throw that in the transmission for tonight. We'll replace we'll replace the diff sides. You should put this between you. You should never put this RC between you and your wife. <laughs> A rift between you. <laughs> Let's see. Overhead working. It is. I'm floating oddly positioned. Will move me slightly over. All right. So we need to drop in the rubber seal. Then we've got a metal washer. You guys want that overhead cam closer in or where it's at? I like the overhead camera with the, the that version of me right there, but let's see what you guys think. All right, inside in and Oh, it says we got to do that three times, obviously. Okay. I was not 100% sure what I was going to be building tonight. Tonight was just, I was just dog tired. Um, and it just, it was, tonight was dragging me. I just didn't know if I was going to be able to, to hold it together for a live, but I got sat down for a second, got that small whiff of a second wind. So we do have this is the the locker that they include, um, and I'm gonna put that in what's gonna be the center diff. So I don't believe that I need to do any of the. Uh, I don't need to worry about any of the O rings or any of that. Just confirming. Oh, I do still need to run the gasket O ring between the center diff case and the ring gear or the spur gear so it's good to note which makes sense with that did it come with a mold kit a mold kit? you talking that's my own, that was my own purchase <laughs> the wanting to buy some of the Want to try and mold some things. My Alumalite, I think is what it's called. So we need more of it. Nice hat. Sold one to the UK fan. Hey, what do you know? Yes, Gunner, still wearing your hat because it is a damn good hat. And as you guys may have noticed, I don't normally wear branded hats. Hardly at all. But this hat is just sometimes you just find a good hat you can't not wear it josh need to eat more armageddon you know what it's right behind me i had another piece today actually um at work i brought it into work and uh, well i had another bag i took i had that into work and i ended up having another piece like a little here here's the piece here's the bag from uh what was it, Wednesday? This stuff is, it's still absolutely stupid hot. Um, but I do like it still. I don't know why, but I still do have, I don't, I feel like I'll, I'll have a tiny piece again. I'm just so afraid of getting it all over my hands. So we're just going to eat the tail end of a piece. That's a pretty good sized piece, honestly. Oh, even the smell of it gets you a little bit. Oh, man. <laughs> it hits you. It hits you. It doesn't really sneak up. It just punches you in the face. Yep. Uh, like I said, it like it doesn't sneak. There's nothing. I got Armageddon dust on my manual. 
<clears throat> wash your hands. Yes. Well, I can't leave, but I do have hand sanitizer at the very least. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or practice or not. <clears throat> okay. Whew. We'll see. Maybe we'll be able to get through a whole bag by the end of night. End of tonight. All right. There's our cross pins. <laughs> a clean burn. It really does. It's it's the equivalent of of uh, a, like a shot of Everclear. Do you remember that when you were a teenager and you thought that was a good idea? Not a whole, I don't think anybody ever did a shot of Everclear, but like you would mix it with things like this is a good idea. Okay, we're gonna build a bunch of these. Little bit on fire. It's okay. I don't. I don't remember taking shots of Everclear, but I know I've taken them. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> yeah, remember, that was like one of those. Would you make? We'd make jungle juice. That was the worst. Hold back. Hold back. Hold back. <laughs> Armageddon decal for the. Hey, the arm or uh, rock bouncers always have some sort of livery to it. I don't know. Well, I don't know if we'll be able, maybe we'll be able to get through. That's, that's quite a challenge to pose to myself for no reason and no reward whatsoever. But seems like only downsides for me to try and eat the whole bag. Hate building differentials. Okay. Oh, I'm touching my face. Shouldn't do that. Shouldn't touch your face. Ah, okay. We gotta fill the diffs as well. Um four reasons. I am not going to fill the diffs because I'll tell you what, I'm not going to run this with an open diff. I'm going to lock this because I have lockers finished already that I have already machined that are just going through the process of. So for those that don't know, I work at Vanquish products. I go there every day. Every day, every damn day. And uh, recently, I, our employee who used to handle all the programming um, for our, for our Swiss machines, which are like a lathe kind of, anyway, he, uh, he left and we didn't have anybody take that position over. I knew CNC just enough that it's like I figured I could jump in, learn it enough and go forward and I'm stumbling my way through it. But one of the first new things that I accomplished here recently has been rift spools. So All right. I really think all the Vanquish does is R&D stuff and stuff they sell are prototypes, which is why you can never find. We make a lot of stuff and a lot of it goes out the door just really quickly, which is the problem. So by all means, I would love to have a hundred thousand square feet of <laughs> hundred thousand square feet of uh, space to put more machines, but that's not the reality, unfortunately. All right. I'm still building it properly just without the fluid because I'm going to take it all apart and I'd rather not have to fight the fluid. Fight the fluid? That's weird. Okay. 
Bring back the 2.2s, Kid says. Yeah, by all means, we'd like to bring back 2.2s, but right now, just trying to keep up with 1.9s has been, it, it's a discussion point. We've had it. We, we even have a, a plan possibly if we need to, or we can, you know, move some things around and if things catch up, that type of deal. Two diffs done, center spool, which, like I said, we still need to put in the uh, the gasket material. Come on, there we go. And you get it lined up. Okay, there we go. How about that? We're close. Close enough. Rammer home. There's a building down the street from me. <laughs> it would be perfect for a second shot. Yeah. Jack, I hope you're not in California because if I was going to make a second shop or even move a first one. It would be in not California. I was at Badlands, but the rain ruined the weekend for me. Darwin, that is a bummer, man. Um, how far are you from there? Hopefully it wasn't a crazy long trip that got busted. It did look like the rain was a, quite a damper. Okay. All right, so front diff, rear diff, centered, locked diff, all done. Two hour drive, still need, not, man, I need a cool, act. yeah, Ben, you're coming to Axial Fest. It'll be fun. To, all right, heat's wearing off just a little bit. Man, it is, you just don't get used to that punch. Whew. Oh, you keep feeling like, you think they're gonna be used to it. I, okay, I, I think that this whole bag thing's a terrible idea that we need to just. Since Nicole is not here, you're an idiot. Gray Matter Fab, well pl well placed. Uh, I think anybody who watches it would understand that that was not made in <laughs> poor taste. And uh, I think the joke plays well. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I you just wish your tongue was out of your head at sometimes, but it almost makes you just like a little loopy. Oh man, that one. I feel like that one was worse. Oh, okay. Focus. So many things to try and focus on. Jack, what were you saying? Uh, be 10 times, yeah, so it will be 10 times cheaper. Yeah, not in California, good point. Oh. My mouth is on fire. I need to dye this cage on this rig fire red. Oh. <laughs> There we go. Man, polish is tight on that on that uh, pinion or the bearing spots. If I can't talk, it's because I've gone slightly retarded from the heat of jerky. Let's 
also. Man, they really break up the bags in this kit. Heat buzz. Yes, I feel like heat buzz is a thing. I think that's exactly what I'm uh, experiencing. Okay, so part two of this, as I said, I am going to lock this diff. That's why I didn't put oil in there. And that's why I'm also not going to grease this gear yet. So I'm not forgetting to grease the gear. I'm purposefully omitting that portion of the step. Do not think, don't think that I'm an idiot for that, at least. You can think whatever you want for the jerky, but. Scott O'Blander, thank you much, sir. $1.99, $1.99, I'll eat a piece of jerky. <laughs> Kidding, not doing it. Um, are the axle housings visibly different? That is a fantastic question. Um, man, I think I threw my old ones away. But did I do it recently? I'm a dumpster dive in my trash can. I've been shop cleaning the last several days. I do have it. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. See, I was thinking to myself, do I really need to throw this away? I shouldn't have. Um. So that looks exactly the same. The fin, the texture on them is different. Go to overhead. Um, I don't think that you're going to be able to. You can kind of see the sheen of the axle is a little different. Um, but the outside looks exactly the same can't tell if that webbing is a little thicker or not um let's just see oh what the calipers are all wonky weird i've done that twice now three millimeter webbing Three okay, that didn't change. Is there any difference on the back of the axle? Uh, no, these axles look exactly the same to me. So it could have been a material change, but I don't think that the actual housing design changed, at least on the ones that I have. Anyway, these are going back in the trash. My nose is running. Harley, uh, Iceman said off topic, but why the offset pumpkin on Vanquish F9 Curry? Um, I'm not sure which one specifically you're talking about. There's a lot of F9 Curries, but um, offset housings are more scale. Centered housings are not very scale. They don't look realistic. So offset, always more realistic. I say always. That's a broad term. Not Nothing is always, right? But uh, for the most part, it's to make things more realistic. Okay. My nose is running. My mouth is less on fire again. Okay. Uh, they have a new mold though. Uh, so yeah, they there could be a new one, but like the one in this kit, definitely not. It does not appear to be any different. So this is weird. I'm building this rift right now and put the TV on for background noise and the video popped up. So I'm building mine at the same time. What's up, Jeff Roberts? Okay. So rear axle. What else do we got? Done that. We've done that. 
Diff covers on knuckles, C hubs, axle shafts, etc. Just eat a real size pizza, Nancy. You don't understand this stuff. Okay, so the steering stops go towards the back. And they're also labeled left and right. Also a handy bit of information. I need to put the bearings in before the C hubs. What's for dinner? Uh, that's a good point. They're a good question, Ben. Uh, that has not been something I have thought about yet. I usually eat after the streams on Fridays because that's always <laughs> Gunner. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hold back. <laughs> All right. I'm... From your donation, I'm eating another small piece. <laughs> My stomach hurts on Sunday. Oh, it's getting getting crumbs everywhere. We're gonna have to do some cleanup. <clears throat> Dislike just due to the lack of cats yelling at you. Oh, I'm sure they could be around tonight. God damn. Yeah. Um, but Nicole's only been gone a few days. Um and uh or a couple of days, whatever what it's been, something like that. Seems like longer. <sighs> Great matter, Fab. Thank you. I bet Matt is not eating his bag. I bet you're right. He's probably smarter. It's good in like a punishing way. It's the, you just got to get over that, that first, uh, that first real hit. And then the flavor is good. It lasts, that heat lasts, but that first punch, it'll get you. Oh, I'm, I'm actually sweating, sweating. If you hold the water in your mouth a while, it helps. Oh. Okay. Oh. That last piece was bigger. Oh, that last one hit me way different. <sighs> Jeremiah, thank you. Make two more pieces. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know about that. Pieces also, I have the Proline Van Body now. Side tear, side tear carpet out of the vans. Oh, you're tearing the carpet out of your new, yeah, your new van. Man. Go get some milk. Travis, I do not have milk in the house. It's just not something Nicole and I really have usually. Not that we are... What would that be? Vegan? Oh, obviously. <laughs> we just don't drink a lot of dairy. Except we eat cheese. Cheese on everything. <laughs> the different feeling is the ulcer starting, right? It's my nose running. Hang on. A nose running and my mouth on fire. 
I'm trying to concentrate. You really concentrate on the kit. Sometimes you forget that your mouth is an inferno. Question I haven't seen in a while. Toe in or toe out and why? Oh, that is a good question. Um, isn't it toe in in the rear for a little... Well, if you're talking solid axle, um, then you're only talking in the front. So there we go. Get in there. Milk and almond. Yes, right? Jerky is only expensive meat candy. What is... Towing. I I really don't run tow on almost anything because all my stuff is solid axle. If anything, I might have a hair a hair of tow in on a solid axle every once in a while for a little bit more steering angle since usually the inside tire is the one that hits the length first. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got that on all of these at that axle shaft time. Did you sing a, did you bring a six pack of Waterloo at least? I only have this is my last Waterloo in the house. I don't even think that I have any more bubbly. <clears throat> I have to go to regular regular water. You look a little pale. I should look very red. As in being on fire. Those are some weird little pieces stuck in there still. So long side is going to be. That is the long side. And another bearing. When are we going to see some awesome vanquished parts for the rift? Uh, we will. That will uh, that will be coming. Um, a lot of them. But we ended up adding some machinery for projects like this. And it's some advanced machines, which have taken a real a real significant amount of time to get set up. So we got some new, we got a new five axis with a big 45 pallet loader on it, which is pretty amazing. Um, but lots of tooling and fixturing to create for it. So, and then, you know, so there'll be a lot coming, but we're getting there. Right. Going to add a disclaimer. If you die while on stream, satisfied jerky is not responsible. <laughs> if, what if you sweat embarrassingly through a shirt from jerky on a live stream? Okay. little bit of pressure one side on next side okay 
you look and act like you took up a low took up a coke habit. <laughs> what is in that jerky? <laughs> huh. Huh. Interesting. Well, I don't know the full recipe, but I'm pretty sure that's not the feeling they'd at they advertise with that stuff. Although my nose does, you know, I'm you know running a lot. I'm super uncomfortable, and you know, I'm just chatty because I'm on a stream. So I could see it. I assure you that is not my, if I had that issue, my RC car issue, I would not be able to fund. I can't fund that many bad habits. <laughs> Mike J, does that jerky affect audio on your end? <laughs> okay, so I already assembled that. We got link mounts. I swear, Dan, it's just the jerky sniffles. <laughs> Dan had already left today at the shop by the time I went and grabbed another bag of this Armageddon jerky. And uh, so I didn't get to try and bribe him into taking it. Taking it? Eating it? However you're supposed to put that. And my, yes, cap hits. All right. Trying to keep the bias out of it. Is the VS410 Pro the best of the best, or would it be better to build something like a G-Speed TJ Brazen chat? I mean, they're very different things. Like, I mean, I wouldn't, one of the flat rail chassis is not something I would build as a trail rig ever. Um, it's They're not going to be nearly as durable. Uh, they don't have, they're not nearly as complete. Um. You know, like you put those together for if you're trying to put together a, a truck that is just kind of a scale truck, like isn't, you know, doesn't have, isn't just like a full featured or function, you know, like deal. Like all it is, is it looks like a scale truck and it performs well, then those are good options. Um, you know, that's why I have a comp rig that's that because I'm not trying to make it like a nice trail truck or something like that. It's I'm trying to you know, just compete. But if I'm going out to have fun, even when I want it to handle well, my VS410 is what I'm going to grab. But, you know, like when I go to compete, I, I take a truck that isn't my VS410. So, you know, depends what your depends on how you phrase things. Not gonna lie, maybe I can feel it slightly in my gut. So, do I need to? Yep, bags three. Well, I'm sold. Ordering one now. Strictly crawling. No, no trick. No trailing. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Jeremiah. Thank you, sir. Just wait till you're in the bathroom. It feels like lava. <laughs> also, man, eat up a big piece. Make your view. You're cr I'm telling you, I viewers would be unhappy because I wouldn't be able to talk. And this would be a very boring stream. It would just be a grown man here crying. And then everyone else would look at you like, what are you watching? More so than people already do. When they uh, see someone just watching somebody else build a truck. 
There we go. One rod in. Brian Sherwood, thank you, sir. Just eat a man-sized chunk. Make up for no Nicole. I'm telling you, it would be the opposite. It would be me not being able to talk, probably coughing my guts out. Will my rod end tool? No, it will not. Will the TGH one hold it at all? No, it will not. What if I put it sideways? Hmm. That's a bummer. Actually, I'm going to pop the ball back out. And then if I put it sideways, I think I can make it work. It's not going to be pretty, but I'm going to have to start it by hand. That's better than doing it by hand. Coughing your guts out. Yeah, have you ever not eaten something so hot that it like makes you actually like kind of cough and <laughs> Chibs, I think, sir. What do you call a dinosaur that likes spicy jerky? And megasaur. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Honestly, so Axial did the whole tie rod thing on this one where one of these is opposite threaded. This is a bent tie rod, or I did like a turnbuckle, you know, where one's opposite. This is a bent tie rod. Nobody is spinning this around to adjust the threads. The reason I hate that they did that stuff. Hundred dollars, would you eat a big piece? I, oh, I don't, I honestly don't know if I could handle. A big piece, I think I would, I would, Physically have to leave the room. <laughs> anyway, my complaint is, is that the whole turnbuckle reverse threading thing that Axial's doing now is stupid. And whoever decided that it was okay to do on a trail truck like this isn't in this portion of the hobby. They're a racer who's designing these parts and they should stop. Someone should go to them and say, this isn't what we do. This isn't how we do it in trail trucks. There's my, there's my soapbox moment. I'm sure there will be more, but for now, <clears throat> that's the first one. Yeah. Carrot. Yeah, a Carolina Reaper one. Wait, oh, we must we must be discussing things on the side in there. Yeah, I think that Gunner was I think maybe saying, but yeah, that it says the main spice in this. There's Carolina Reaper and some sort of scorpion, Trinidad scorpion pepper. Also very spicy. Talk to Randall on that one, Josh. So R Randall's the project manager. I don't think that he is the designer. I don't know if that's something that Randall would have necessarily caught or been. Like he should have at some point, but at that point, maybe it was already just. But I will absolutely continue to rail on that one for how terrible of an idea I think it is. I also do not like the, you can't, are these, they're all metal. It's just, they got two different sizes. Okay. Trinidad scorpion, <laughs> Trinidad scorpion pepper alone sounds deadly. Uh, yeah, I think that the uh, Carolina Reaper is spicier than a Trinidad Scorpion, but it is still, I think it was it Carolina Reapers, like almost 2 million and a Trinidad Scorpion, I think it's like 1.2 or 1 point something. An engineer complaining about stupid things from an engineer is nice to see. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
I build enough kits, I can com I can complain. I've built more kits in the last 18 months than probably in most of the rest of my RC life. These axles are not complex, but they're not super fast to build either. Man, I'm 47 minutes into one axle. Granted, I've got the other diffs built, but still. I feel like I should be much further ahead of the game by now. That's okay. Hopefully we can rip through this thing. There we go. Did the VS410 get a hundred increase lately? Or am I? Uh, not quite, but almost everything uh, went up 10%. Uh, just because the price of, well, the price of everything has gone up tremendously for us. And we tried to we tried to just absorb everything as long as we could, but it's still, hopefully, hopefully aluminum comes back down because that, I'm just not kidding that the pricing of, of everything for us is scary high. Okay. Why do I have two screws left over? Um, I put those in, there's nothing there. I put those four in, I put the king pins in. Put the seat, those screws in on all of them. Yep. Okay. Diff cover. Okay. I just haven't gone through that part yet. I just have extra parts. That's fine. All right. Not worrying about the servo saver. Now we're onto the rear axle. What bag is this? C7. Let's see. We used to buy four by eight quarter inch plate for $180 and now it's $400. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, the price of our aluminum used to be less than $2. Now it's, you know, almost three. That's crazy. That's for a pound. And of course, like, you know, that's the thing with machining is that you always start with big blocks to make little parts. So <laughs> so even though you're using that little part in the end, definitely, definitely adds up. But then the other thing that really adds up is like the shipping on materials. Obviously there's stuff in the VS410 that we don't make in-house. We make as much as we can in-house, but the, uh, a lot of the stuff that, you know, when it comes over, like the cost of shipping for items is, is unimaginable. I mean, what used to cost a, a few thousand dollars is now 12, 13,000 plus. Absolutely incredible. Try buying a sheet of OSB now. That's it. Yeah, but I have not needed any lumber through all of this, which seems like that's a lucky thing for me because if you're trying to build anything lately, good lord. Hopefully, any of you guys who are in the trades like that aren't seeing a decrease in business because of it. Seems like there's still people playing with a lot of plenty of money that. They're still doing things, but how long can that last? <laughs> thousand, guy in a moose says, yeah, thousand pound, thousand pound piece of steel for an 80 pound part. Yup. Like, yeah, kind of how that works sometimes. 
Do you recycle the shavings? Uh, yeah, all. Re yeah, anybody who's in there. I mean, honestly, you have to just because otherwise it would stack up. But when you recycle material, you don't get nearly the cost of what you paid for it. Like you don't get to sell it back at the same price per pound. Because it's got to go back to a mill, get melted down, processed, the whole thing again. So there's like a lot of steps before it's able to go back in the same way. And the type of, and you know, the condition of chips, like if it's block versus actual chip, like all of that stuff, that all goes into it. So, me, need to seat this pinion a little better. There we go. Nope, still not seated properly. Got to pull on a little harder. Man, that doesn't want to spin. We are going to have to open that back up. I lose a bunch of frames. Looks like it kicked out a ton of people. Why did that lock up? Okay, that spins. Got those screws out. This does not sound good. Let's just try and seat that pinion a little more. Uh, what's the CNC brand of choice at Vanquish? Uh, oh, there we go. That sounded like something. Um, we use a lot of Matt Sura. That kind of that's kind of like our our probably our go to brand. So, um, there we go. Had to really push on that one. We've got Matt Sura, Brother, Citizen. Those are kind of our big ones. What's my plan with this one, Jimmy? Um, well, I don't have a rift currently. Mine got, mine got a, what the actual F? It's just locked up. There we go. It spins after. Okay. It's not great, but maybe it'll smooth out after we get grease and everything like that in it. Hmm. Does not sound great. Brr. But I've seeded it as best I can. Is the ring gear against the diff plate? What does what do you mean there? Uh, I've got the ring gear seated as best it can. Oh, you mean onto the actual diff housing? Yeah, that was as tight as I could really, as real as as I could uh, comfortably install those, because they're still going into a plastic diff cup. So I don't know. But like I said, I'm gonna pull that apart to put lockers in the both axles anyway. So I'm not super worried until I get into that final stage. Like I said, there's no grease, which again, if you're just tuning in now, I'm aware that I didn't grease the axles um, because I am going to go back in and throw lockers in. So I didn't worry about that at this point. There we go. Oh, actually, well, we'll see. Yeah, just does not sound great, but.
Hopefully it smooths out. We'll get there. It'll do it'll do for now, I think. Uh do, do, do. we need countersink screws, which there they are. I like the uh, the way that the parts are. I mean, there's a lot of bags, but I do like how they're how they're uh, bagged, basically individual. This battery is almost dead. We need to swap out. Diff cover screws possibly over tightened. I mean, they could be, but they're not, they're definitely not cranked on. I've got the chuck set on this, you know? I mean, I could lighten it, but it's usually about where I build with plastic. No, they're barely, I would, I would have snugged that more by hand even. Yeah, that's really conservative as far as how tight that is. I shimmed the pinion away from the ring gear and it's, it's silk, so it's silk smooth. Yeah. I'm going to throw the lockers in there and we're just going to send it. Uh, where do you set the clutch on the DeWalt? Usually 12 for plastics. Long, for long screws. If you're doing short screws, you got to be a little bit more careful. And I don't necessarily hit the clutch. Yeah, it's dead. Tripping on stuff. There we go. That sounds better. I don't necessarily hit the clutch like I was saying. I just know that if I do get there, then I've got bigger issues. Or that's as much as I wanted. There was a troll in here? Did I missed it? It'll wear in eventually. Dana, I totally agree. I think that is. So. Link mounts. Okay. A lot of, I should have brought my work DeWalt home for this so I didn't have to <laughs> keep switching bits. Yeah, I didn't miss much. It wasn't even a funny draw. Am I gonna make sure I'm orienting these correctly? Sometimes they, yes, I am. Okay. I was just sending it without, I may have to get a rift to dig the cage style rigs, just need axles to hold up. Yeah, I think uh, the rift will be, I mean, it's like, for those who weren't around, when the Wraith came out, the Wraith came out in 2009, 2009 or 10, that time frame. And uh, when it first came out, you know, it had, it had uh, issues, you know, and it wasn't even common for people to use brushless systems back then. And, uh, so if you would have tried to do, you know, the things we're doing with AR60 axles now with them, then you would have had the worst times because there was no parts available. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 
that, that thing definitely needs to be worn in. Again, no grease. I get that. So, did I? No, I didn't. Here, 60 axles have come a long way. Yeah, that is very true. You guys know there's actually a mistake on just about every AR-60 axle. The stock... The stock truss that comes on every AR-60 axle, the upper link mounts are off center. And that was a mistake. If you measure them, you will see that those, which actually makes your axle slightly off center under the vehicle. So there you go. Something you probably never noticed. <laughs> What's the plan for this truck? Just to finish it to drive it. Is is all I have planned. Just since my Wraith is just just is what it is. Wraith. What like Rift. Okay. We gotta build links. Yay. Wow. So we're not worried about the servo horn. I got grease and shite everywhere. Not gonna run the saber. We will need that. What I should do is grab my, there we go. My parts tray, this one of the vanquished parts trays. Honestly, like I'm not, I don't push the vanquish stuff like on, on you guys during these streams. It's just not, you buy it or you don't. I don't really care. I'm here to, have some fun and hang out but these trays are my favorite thing i freaking love these things i don't use the work mat because i like the look of the wood table on stream like it's just because i like this aesthetic but the uh these rubber trays are the best they're freaking amazing i used to run these j concept ones like this but these are smaller by a significant amount here, let me show you. And so you can see that how they, there's a decent amount of room. That's there's the there's even, but now I've got a handful of these. Okay, we're going to put this extra stuff in here for now. Oh, these are steering stop screws. We should install those little guys. Let's do that. Probably do those by hand. I like this trays, but I found myself aggregating and dropping screws in and they bounce out. How hard were you dropping them? <laughs> okay, we're going to put the screw. Yeah, I was going to do that by hand, but that plastic feels stiff enough to send it in. Save our wrists as we can. The molded in steering stops are a nice touch with the adjustable screw. Good thing to help save your servos. You have a link for everything you use except the drill. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should always put that in the in the video. I never do. Yeah, I have like my my basic one at the bottom. It's like all my camera gear. Like some of it, it's just copied from video to video. It's not even up to date. But okay, like I said. Back to links. You don't uh, finish each screw by hand, just the drill. Yeah, no, I just, just this. It's honestly, I've used it so much. I've built so many freaking kits and the clutch on this one is so good and repeatable. Um, and you can set it so, you can set it so fine. It's just, 
Great. And like with these little, these tiny screws, like those, I just put them in and then watched until they flushed. So I didn't, I didn't actually, you know, worry about anything beyond that. Links. What is that? C12. That's spare parts. Is there supposed to be another C bag that I didn't see? Didn't see C? Oh, there's three C bags, C3 and then C12 inside C3. Oh, let's see. Sorry. Okay. We got our links and trailing arms. Set that over here. We got to pay attention to our rod ends because we've got a bunch of straight and then a bunch of bent. Let's hit 300 likes and Josh will take a man size. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <clears throat> that is, uh, it's a little pushy. Man size bite. I'm Musha. I'll bring this jerky on Sunday when we go run the TRX six. And you can talk about a man-sized bite then. Okay, is this... Okay, these links don't... Is there a manual not to scale? Let's see. This says 87.3. <laughs> their manual is not to scale. <laughs> I hate that. Make it <sighs> like it's so let me turn down the exposure a little bit. Hold please. So you can see behind me like this you want to like check the link, but you put the link there and the link is clearly longer than the deal. So you met, this says 87.3. And when you measure that from flange to flange, you only get 82.4. Like, I know that's not a huge deal, but that should be a pretty standard thing. I know I do not. I am picky. I am, I'm not knocking this vehicle. I like this vehicle. Obviously, I already have one. But there's certain things that I am picky on, and I will, I will get a little, little caring about. <laughs> Can I order Armageddon online somewhere? Yes! You can, in case you too would like to punish yourself. Uh, satisfied. You can see it's spelled a little weird. So it's like a long I. So satisfied jerky. I'm pretty sure Gunner put up a coupon, coupon code for like 10% off. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like Harley Scale. So, all right, and then the other one is opposite because turnbuckles, that's ridiculous. Oh, and of course this one's bent, so we can't. <gasps> 321 jerky time. That's not three, there's 136 likes on this video. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> 87.3, but of course we can't measure that or can't just match the, 
manual because that's not to scale. 87.3 is so picky on their part. Oh, gotta back her out. Let's see what that does. That's close. Close enough for the girls we date, as my dad always said growing up. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing I need to be, build two of those. Indeed. Next. But there's 300 in the chat, so that counts. <laughs> right. Trust issues. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm telling. Best thing Josh ever did was the dumpster he made. I didn't make the dumpster even. <laughs> That was made by, pardon my noob, or Turks and Jerps on Instagram. Scott O'Blander. Yeah, that is the, the hashtag Harley scale. That is the code for jerky. Discount code on satisfied. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get a bite out of that. Other than getting, other than all the jerky gunners giving me which is much appreciated, but yes, dumpster was awesome. The dumpster is awesome. And one of my favorite things to have up on the shelf behind me, like I've got the dumpster, which is amazing. Pardon my new bill. Next to it is the mat signal 3d printed, like spotlight style thing that says SPG backwards in it that Matt built me super. I just think it's super cool. Next to it is a little like antique style uh, outboard motor, RC outboard motor that was given to me by Kevin out of Texas. And I, I don't know how to say his last name. It's like John G G O something G I E O G I O something. Um, and it was super cool. So that's sitting up there. And then next to it is the, uh, ends of the diffu end of the diffuser from the TRX six, which blew off during the speed attempt. The one that said, do it for Dale. Nailed it. Okay. Now, 96 millimeter, which we can just go ahead and drop right on there, and I'll tell you right away. It The problem is, is that it's like close to the right scale, but not the right scale. Like, if you're going to, if you're going to attempt it, do it right. <laughs> if it's not going to be to scale, just make it small with a note. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll complain to Axe. I'll, I'll call Randall. Because even if it wasn't his decision to include turnbuckle style links, which is one of the things that I super dislike, he should have caught the manual. So I'll make, I'll yell at him for that. The shelf is making me itch from not, DK, that shelf is level. It is a camera illusion. It's shorter than these other two. I've checked it with a level. It's level. Guys are, but here's a piece of news. All three of those shelves are going to be going away. They're all coming down soon. Not, not right now, but, but soon-ish. I checked it live on video even showed that it's level. Yes, it is. I'm running a 16 millimeter Sigma lens on here and that's more RC storage. No, no, actually something not RC related even. I mean, RC related because it's in this room, but no, I would add more shelves like those, but that's not what it is. No, oh, the shelves must stay. No, nope, they're going to go. And so, yeah, crazy stuff. So, uh, no, oh, this is supposed to be 96 millimeters exactly. So let's go ahead and give that a check. A cat gymnasium? Nope. 
it's uh it's something that I'm worried would be I'm I'm the design of it I'm having to take into consideration uh the cat gymnasium abilities because of I do not want them stepping or I don't want them damaging it if they were to step on it, which they absolutely would. Um So let's okay. That okay. That three D C and C thing Hemistorm has. I have one of those, but that's in my garage. It's not the same one, but it's it's uh it's the same type of thing. But I keep that in the garage because that's that is not an in the house item. I mean, I know Hemistern had his in the house, but it's not an in the house item for me. I use it too often, and it already finds a way to get chips in the house. Okay. We have to. Damn it, there's more links. So many links. Building. Building links, especially these, one of my least favorite things. Okay, but these are just straight rod ends on this one. So that's a bonus. You're getting a life-size figure of yourself. <laughs> oh, Still got to start it by hand. Keep forgetting. Okay. One down. Vacuum form table. No, this is this will not be that far off of the wall. And it's it's not a tool. It's kind of a tool. It's not really a tool. I mean it is really a tool. I don't know how you want to say it. 113.5. All right. How close are we? Let's see. Josh has zero clue what anime. I know what anime. Now, I don't I don't watch anime, but I definitely know what anime is. Um, mainly from cosplay models on Instagram, but still. I can appreciate it for what for what it is. <laughs> but no, I I don't know that I've ever watched anime. Okay. There we go. One of those big head posters. Oh, no. I, oh, I guess that would make sense, though. Calling it tool. Man, I got that one right on. Bam. Okay. So, on these, one end 4028, the other end 4027. 4027 is the wider. So, the bent end gets the wider side. There we go. If that isn't enough of a pain in the ass, they've got two different width pivot balls on their links. I don't know why that was necessary. But seems like a bit of an oversight. So, like I said, wider side gets the bent. Oh, wait, no. 4028. Yeah, is the narrower. 4027 is the wider. Okay. 4027 is the straight. Why can I not? I'm having such a hard time just remembering that in my head. My, I do not think that I'm ADD, but sometimes I wonder.
Let's see. It was required to get a cop. Oh, I, d I don't think that I, I must have missed it. Okay. Bent links. Black does not go in the bent. Black goes in the straight. There we go. I wouldn't want to be Randall's inbox once Josh is finished with this. Oh, I'm just going to call him. Listen, Randall. Randall is in Colorado this weekend, though. He is at the Rangely We Rock event, I believe, competing in the Laser Nut Pretty Penny Buggy. So, let's see. All right. Hey, Josh, what's the five axis machine? What five axis machine does Vanquish use? We have a Matsura MX520 with a Trinity AX3 45 pallet loader. Okay, and then on the straight ones, should get one of each and it should not matter what side is what. All right, there we go. Uh, any pro tips on how to grow my YouTube channel? I've got a whopping 26 up. Just got to keep doing content and you got to keep doing it consistently. Put a new video up every week, same time or same day, every week. Keep doing it. Don't ever stop. You will. That's all it is to it. Just don't ever stop. Nicole Johnson just did a video on Pretty Penny. Nicole Johnson. I feel like that is a familiar name, but I do not know who she is. Is she a monster truck person? Matt, what what are we building? We are building a rift kit. What's his comment going to be? Psh, that was so one month ago when he did his. <laughs> Kentucky sky blue. So we have the brace pieces and these are going to go custom rift Kentucky blue. I already did exactly knew it was coming Matt. And that one, oh, we do need a spacer ball for this middle one. Okay. Need a mouse right there. The come on, this is a pain. See if that works anyway. But yeah, uh, did someone say who she was? I like I said, I, the name sounds familiar. I feel like she used to be into monster truck or was a monster truck possibly driver. Is that correct? Am I totally wrong? There we go. That's way, felt way harder than it should have been. But I do that a lot. It's okay. All right.
we go. And we will, of course, need lock nuts. What kit are we building? We are building the Rift Kit, the Axial Rift Kit. So I hadn't done this one yet. Where? Where'd my little open end 5.5 mil go? Oh no, I have misplaced a tool. I don't like that at all. That is not something I do often. Um. Well. Um, dang it. I don't know where that went. Perry G, thank you very much. She drove We Rock in KOH before doing Monster Jam. Gotcha. I kind of remember her name from some of that stuff back in the day. Um, no librarian today? No, Nicole is in Charleston, South Carolina. So she will be back next week. And next week we'll be doing the uh, the Toy Ann. I'm really perturbed that I lost my 5.5 somewhere. Um, we're going to be doing that Toy Ann four-stroke motor. I was going to do it this week. But Nicole actually saw it and was like, oh, can you wait and do that when I get back? Sure. Sure can. Hanging out with the 10 millimeter. I freaking guess. Just. I'm usually good about my tools going back in the same place. So. I don't. I don't commonly have this issue. I'm gonna act like it's not bothering me. It's fine, totally cool, I'll find it. No big deal. If not, I'm gonna have to buy a new one because that is one of those tools that is just, once you start using, just having one of those around, You never go back. And he never reads my comments. So I'll tell you guys, he left it two pages. Smart ass, Phoenix. Cat stole the tool. Psh, they've been radio silent tonight, which is cause for its own concern. Go. <laughs> it's next to Chief's huevos. Yeah, he's he's sure a lot lighter on the tail area now. I'm guessing that they'll wander in here at some point. He's busy with the best time to bust his job. It is rare I don't see a cat's rear end block the candidate. You know, the thing is, is that those cats are so obsessed with Nicole. They are just attached to her. So that when she comes in here, they're just like, Psh, got where, got to be wherever she's at. Josh will end the stream, walk to the living room and find, a, find utter destruction. Let's. Okay, I did it right. I'm making sure I put the lock nuts on the inside on at least or on one of them. Everyone's still got Mike J. Psh, you've made me, you've made me numb to it at these points. 
And I know that if I was to lose audio, somebody else would tell me first because for some reason your internet would be lagging. Okay, big end, get 27, which is the wider one. Big end, wider, makes sense. Okay. Got that. All the pivot balls are installed. There we go. All the links are done. I have a screw and a nut left over. Ah, I should not. I have two screws and a nut. There's an, I omitted one. Where is the other nut? Better, oh, there, there it is. I've spotted it. Yep. Uh, Unibody, I sent you a link on IG. I will have to check it in a bit. Okay. Done. Done. Should we need another small piece of jerky? Let's see. Unless that's why my jaw is hurting right now. Scout 800 for sale on Facebook. Ooh, is it running driving? That one's bigger. That doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a, it is a lot. Ah, damn it. It's a scout, so no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> oh. now we're building a transmission. <laughs> No, it was a project. Ah. All right, bag D. I think I have short term memory issues. Why well, I keep doing that? <clears throat> oh. That piece was too big. <clears throat> that was too much. Don't touch your face. So we got that. Then we need a bearing. bearing and not a clip we've got the big gear rides on the bearing another bearing and then the clip Whoop. try and not fling the Jesus clips. There's that. Bearing. 
other slider. So this does come, the kit does come with the two speed. She would always note that. Got a seat though. Her. It kind of doesn't want to see and show me the uh, do I have a one, two, three block handy? I do. You know what time it is? One, two, three block and tiny hammer. I almost still can't see the groove. I can see where it's not going down. It's so close. I feel like it's moving. Ah, it did. I think I have enough there now. Maybe, maybe not. It's a little tight. Little tight. Shaft, I think, just needs a little bit more. Tiny, tiny hammer in my wine. What does that mean? Elton John, tiny hammer. <laughs> Josh, can you marry Nancy and I at Axial Fest? I technically have that ability. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa now, but on top of a mountain overlooking at the summit where there's so many wedding vow opportunities up there. It's just, I had to push that down. And I think what is happening is that there's a lip on the inside of this shaft that, which way is it right here? It's on the inside between this gear and that the square section there and the lip there. It just, it's not enough to allow the bearing to go all the way down. So I had to, I had to tap that on. So I get enough space to make that E clip groove show up. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Donner, it's like Moose Jaw saying on the summit where people died and ate each other. That is, you know, where, this is this place is a symbol of till death do you part. <laughs> it, it's r right. It's <laughs> okay. D two. Now. Uh, is this shaft symmetrical? It appears so. It would appear that we are safe in that assumption. I think we, hopefully we can put the hammer, but till death do you part. Shove. That was fast. <laughs> oh, that's... That's awful. So we've got more bearings. And we've got the output shafts. There's that. And where's our center diff? Yeah, this guy. That's going to. Um, I goes this way. Output goes in there.
it does not show a bearing on this yet on that side so i'm not putting it in we got that we've got the mid-gear set and oh which one is which goes there upper side gets the so we got this it's gonna go in there i will grease the transmission that like that and this is gonna go there cool all right now let's grab the grease so got some vanquish grease May or may not be a cat hair in that. So let's get that down into the gear area. Son of a biscuit. Well, make sure there's enough grease in these gears. These big old metal gears, you definitely want to. Okay. Nice and sticky. Okay. So I need to make sure that that. Aha, maybe. I know I put that gear. Oh, I put the big bearing in. But I'm guessing I needed. Yep, I forgot to put the little bearing in. No wonder it fell out. Dang it. My bad. Uh, I'm uh, the center diff in this is locked. I will be locking the axle gears as well. Maybe I'd have to do that. Um, the axle diffs, I meant, but I have not yet. So I did not grease the axles because I plan on taking them out immediately to get those locked. But I already locked the transmission for the same reason. Okay. All right, fixed. My bad. All right, uh, Josh, will there be a ripper run at Axial Fest and Donner? Absolutely. Um, being that I'm not going to have a booth set up there this year, uh, I'll probably have to be a little better at organizing it in advance. So I'll probably work on that in the next couple weeks. So any of the guys in the private Ripper group can, who are going to be attending, we can all coordinate a time when the most of us are going to be there and be available. So we usually do it on Saturday. So Brian sure would thank you, sir. Uh, put hand in bag, then rub eye on faith. <laughs> You're insane, sir. Okay, we need to open bag D4. Get our one, two, three block in here to prop that sucker up on. Oh, there's D4. Pele Lindholm, thank you, sir, for the 50 sec. I would like to know where that's from. Good morning from Sweden. Oh, should have read the comment. From Sweden. Thank you very much. Uh, is Vanquish machined rod ends the same length as the axial stock ones on the SCX-10-3? Um, the SCX-10-3 are different. 
The SCX-10 III also has ones that are reverse threaded, so they would not be a direct replacement for SCX-10 III. They would be a replacement for SCX-10 II stuff, um, and specifically made to, to be the same as the uh, Vanquish Lynx. So thank you, thank you very much, but yeah, so that hopefully that answers your question. Okay, we're doing the shift fork, and I, damn it, putting the shift fork in. We've got to line up. Okay, I see. How. I screwed that in beforehand. Pretty sure that was premature. Even even then, this becomes a little difficult. Pretty much have to pull that out. Oh, my nose is running still. There we go. Okay, that's in. So shift fork is in, linkage is all working. Let's put some grease on that shift fork. What happened to the toy and engine? I am holding that until next week when Nicole will be back. She actually expressed interest in it on her own accord, which I wondered if something was wrong. Like, what'd you do? But she does like engines, so there you go. Okay, you got that. Oh yeah, I'm further than that, I'm already over here. Next, single speed only. Um, I obviously am already building this as a two speed, which is fine for now. Figure, even if I don't like two speeds personally, it's good to build an experience with them. Okay, there we go. You put the shift fork in, you put the shift fork out. <laughs> so jelly bean isn't allowed at Axe Fest. Just for... Ben, did you get the jelly bean already? Matt had not told me this, if so. Be interesting. I just saw it that it camping at Axe Fest. Nope, no camping at Axial Fest this year. I may have found a, a place to camp um, on a piece of private property, friend of a friend, but I don't know if that's set in stone yet. Oh, I know it's not set in stone yet, but yet to see if that's going to happen for sure or not. Hopefully so, because it would cut my commute down, because otherwise I'm going to be driving up and down daily to do it. So, um, where at, where did I possibly find a place? It's, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a piece of private property that's in the, in the area. A friend of a friend has a, like a small cabin there, but it's like a primitive cabin, but basically we would just be using it to, um, a couple of us to park our vehicle at, because that's, um, it's a little bit off road to get there. I don't know. I think if we can make it happen, great. If not, I'm just going to drive from home every day and it's just going to be a long few days. Please tell, tell where Sid camping spot it. Yeah. Uh, well, I wish that it was. I, I don't even know if spot is available yet. And it's not mine. So I can't tell. And I technically don't know. I know about. Can we park on the road in California 72? 
can we park on a road in California for 72 hours? Possible? I really don't. I, I, I don't know. It's going to be such a cluster up there. And I think that people are going to be camping alongside the road because people do that kind of stuff up there. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little on the wild side. Do they not show? They don't show installing the other bearings. Did they? S I had to. I had to miss that, right? That's single speed only. Here's dual two speed. No bearing. No bearing. No bearing. No bearings at all there. Oh, there's this last one here that is for all transmissions. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I'm still missing a bearing. Because I need a bearing on this output. There. There it is. Found it. Okay. So, got the whole transmission together. Ben, you said Ben Fortnite uh, two speed on on Rift. Uh, I so the kit comes with the two speed. Uh, I don't normally, I'm not a big fan of two speeds myself normally, but I built this one with it just just to experience their kit. It's always good to build something and just it's easy to convert to a single speed, which. I will likely do in the future. But gonna be building an SCX10 2 based VS410. Any recommendations? Um, that's a pretty easy setup to do. Um, you know, just grab a VS410 chassis kit and you can basically swap over your SCX10 2 stuff then. Um, and then at that point, it's just a matter of customizing as you. As you desire and so there we go stock vs410 okay at axio fest or sc Two. no you can't run a vs410 like a vs410 pro or ultra because it's not an axial it has to say axial on the box when you started your car did it say axial on the box can those screws be any longer? They are long. Those are a 40 millimeter screw, which is about as long as you run across in almost any kit, um, as far as an M3 screw. Uh, we don't need D12 because we're not running a single speed and that's a block off plate for the shift forks. So throw that aside. Is the Rift going to get foam rotors? <laughs> D. I see what you did there, DK. I approve. This D3. Foam interior? <laughs> There it is. Arr. Do axial rails count? Yep, if you have axial frame rails, that's good. But you also need an axial-based transmission. 
and axles that are based on axial as well. They can be aftermarket axles, but they need to be based on axial design. I'm new, what are you building? We are building the Axial Rift kit. So currently we're finishing assembling the transmission portion. This is a two speed, but So transmission is complete. Now I'm not putting the motor or pinion in yet. Uh, so say you do everything aftermarket, but looks just like SCX 10 two. Is that allowed? Yes. Technically you could technically go that far. Um, you know, you can do chassis that are made as af as upgrades. So technically you can do a VS 410 chassis on a, on an SCX 10 two, cause that, you know, and then as long as you had SCX 10 two style transmission, like a three gear. So if you yeah, have vanquish three gear that counts cause that's a axial three gear style. So that it, that counts. Um, and then you could run Vanquish Rock Jocks or Vanquish F9s. And then, you know, technically still axial based, so on and so forth. But the VS410 Pro is not because it doesn't use the same style, even though the rear axle is close. It's the front axle and the transmission. You can't run that, you know, a VFD transmission because that is not an axial style. So wouldn't an origin VS410 be legal? Technically, yeah, you could. I mean, well, technically no, but technically you could, yeah. Like, it's like that gray area right there. So yeah. Uh, Vanquish 3 gear or VFD, which is my preference. Uh, VFD is my preference all day. That forward and low motor is is absolutely my preference, but for Axial Fest, that's not what, that is not what I would, I would run. I take like this year, I'm uh, one of these next few weeks before Axial Fest, I'll get my ripper back out and we'll get her cleaned up and ready prepped for Axial Fest. It needs some good cleanup on it. What is the date today? 20, I have one day less than a month, basically, until I need to be ready. I'm thinking, um, I have, lucky, luckily for me, I have a uh, another pair, another set of panels for my Ripper. They're technically a Blem set. Um, but what I was thinking was having them coded special. So for Axial Fest, but I don't know yet. I don't know if I have enough time. I don't know if there's enough time. Okay. All right, so we we're just assembling the shift linkage on here. There we go. Close enough. Squint Paladoris. Thank you, sir. Would an axial decal work? A big one, of course. <laughs> hey, you might be able to, might be easier to slide past the judges if so. I mean, well, you, gotta, you just gotta, you gotta get past tech. And even though it's not a competition, like you still have to, you know, they want you to have the tech sticker on the vehicles that go run the trails and all that. Love the pro looking forward to building and running an ultra. Yep. I mean, my pro is my 
preference, but the Ultra is fun, especially if I'm in like certain places. Last year I had a ton of fun with my uh with my Ultra at the Rubicon, especially. Uh, I don't drive my Ultra enough because I'm just so partial to my <laughs> Pro, but when I do go take it out, I'm like, ah, I should drive this more. We all know how that goes, right? You take something out, you're like, man, I, this is a lot of fun. I should do this more often. And then we don't. Barack Collin, Barack Collins, Collin, thank you, sir. No, just a quick, just a comment. I don't appreciate it. Throw a question out whenever you have. Would you run VFD in a comp rig? I have a VFD in my, in my comp rig, that one there. That is a VFD transmission in there. Um, I've got the 21% overdrive in there. Now the VFD has got the, uh, like the shroud over the top of the motor that cut, like for when I built that, um, I just left that off because that's just decorative. Like the posts are what really separate it. So I just left those out because it's just not needed. Um, and the side bolt pattern on the VFD skid plate is the same as a, like SCX10, SCX10 2 style. So you can bolt it into things that are made for that type of transmission and have no issue. Little out of order. I'm putting the transmission in. Even though I still have to do a couple of other things. Anyone know if TRX4 body posts line up on SCX10 2? Uh -huh. I do not know that. Okay, that's. We've got the ESC tray that we have to put on there. And again, Rock Collins. Thank you, sir. All right, ESC tray, drop on top. Uh, what's the thing with the holes? This, oh, uh, this is called a one, two, three block. It's used in machining most, most commonly. Uh, and it's just called that because this is one inch dimension. This is a two inch dimension and this is a three inch. It's just a nice steel weight. It comes in handy a lot of times while building. Just sometimes you need to like put something through it so you can tap on a flat surface or it's got some weight to it. Um, I just find it handy a lot of times. Um, be surprised how many times it, it pops up as being something that I grab. So it's, you can buy them on you know, cheap Amazon, things like that. You don't really need super high precision ones if you're not using them to be a machinist. So um, I think you can get them for like 10 or 12 bucks for a pair. And they can look cool when holding stuff up in photos if you need. <laughs> You'd be surprised just how useful having a steel block really is. Yeah, it's kind of surprising, right, Alec? Like, like, you know what I really need right now? A steel block with some holes. <laughs> like, psh, got it. I'm speaking of that. I have one right here. Pinion and the uh, shift servo stuff. Obviously, we're not putting electronics in right this second. So we are emitting that. Ugh, shocks. Is a drill press vice solid enough? I mean, drill press vices are nice, but this isn't like vice stuff. Sometimes it's not, but it's more compact than a vice too. That's why it's nice to have right. Shocks. All right. We can do it. Which one are the shock? E. Bag E. 
That's F G E. Stupid, stupid baggy. I hate building shocks. Oh, this will be the easiest. Uh, dang it. I was thinking, I saw the, the preload collars on there. I'm like, oh, did they, did they do some work for it? No. No, no, no. They just did the very first part of the step. Okay. I'm going to grab some green slime and try and, well, they, they don't do it in this order in the instructions, but I want to assemble the shock pistons first. I don't like clamping the lower cartridges in without already having the shock pistons in because it's just a way easier way to tear up your o-rings come on one little walker stuck in there okay it came out so all these pistons are the same, so we do shock piston, washer, nut. Just get them started. Try and get through these shocks as quickly as possible. Josh hates building diffs, links, shocks, and painting. <laughs> yeah, which, which, uh, is a significant portion of RC building. I'm not gonna lie, especially solid axle trucks. Some links I don't mind building when I can use the special tools that I have acquired. I've acquired a very special set of tools. Okay, who doesn't hate shocks? Exactly, right? Who likes building shocks? I do like steel tube. Building shocks is the worst part. It's pretty bad. Okay, diffs are not nearly, if, if I had to, I would easily trade diffs for, uh, diffs for shocks. Okay, is this a 4-0 nut? Bigger. Is this 4.5? No, is a five O? Yeah. I guess that's the other side of a T wrench too, isn't it? Do oh god. Okay. We don't need to go ham. We just need to get them firm, especially since they're a lock nut. Make sure that we don't spin the shaft in the plier. Now, on to building the lower cartridges, or whatever you like to call them. Hey, Harley, I'm new to your channel. Love these kinds of videos. Thanks for joining. The live builds are fun, gives us something to do on a Friday night, and keeps me building things, which I enjoy. 
No matter how much I sometimes complain about stupid little things. Ooh, I'm getting dangerously low on green slime. Rot row. Put that on my shopping list. That. Slather it around. All right, we're not going to be as liberal with it since I'm running a little low. But if you're not, if you never use green slime, it's just a lube that is commonly used for shock building. If you ever have a hard time building shocks without leaking, oftentimes what can happen when building shocks is you'll get like micro nicks or cuts in the O-rings, these little things, uh, when assembling, especially when you're putting the shock shaft threads through them. That can be a, a big part of it. Like, you know, you've got these, the whole point is, is that those O-rings are supposed to create a nice seal around the, the shock shaft as it makes its travel. So, um, when you, like the reason I'm not building these shocks exactly the way the manual states is because if you throw if you put these O-rings in and then tighten that lower cap, you'll start to compress the O-rings and then when you go to put the uh, When you're going to put the shock shaft through, you just are going to force cuts. So, anyway. Is slather a real word? A real word? Yeah, slather? Don't you guys use that term? Slather? Is that a... Josh, are you going to eat any jerky tonight? <laughs> okay. Two shorts, two longs. So I haven't put that lower cap on, as you can see yet. Um, wouldn't mind still putting a little bit of loot. Whoa, we have a we have a splooge issue. So a little bit of lube on the tip. Just move it around the threads. So there we go. All right. So that should help it go in a little e easier. Short shock shot. There we go. Find its way through as best we can. Hopefully we didn't cause any issue to the O-rings. There we go. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna make these shocks leak proof, but it's our best shot. A little bit of lube on the tip. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was not I was not concentrating on the words that were coming out of my mouth. Juan down. Find a hole. Okay. Two down. Whatever you say, Pat. <laughs> and now the long ones. Josh, are you aware of any wraith style skid plates for SCX width rails? What do you mean by a wraith style skid plate? I mean, I don't understand what you would need differently. A wraith style skid plate for SCX 10 rails is still kind of just a SCX 10 skid plate. 
where do you get a sway bar for the Rift? Well, um, I believe Axial has their own version. I think it's included with this kit, but it also has a part number to be bought separately. Okay. Oh, damn, come on. Get in there. Okay. Everything seemed to go pretty smoothly. I don't expect that we caused any issue. So, again, should have the best shot at success with these factory shocks. Best we can do. Or best I can think I reasonably had a shot of assembling. All right, we need to open up E5. So we've got rubber bump stops for the shafts. So put those on all four shafts. Just helps soften the blow when you bottom out. So that your shock doesn't take a huge shock load to it. All right, and now we've got the rod ends. So again, we're going to try and as carefully as we can hold the shock shaft. That's another thing that you can do, holding the shock shafts with shock pliers. Um, a good set of shock pliers, hopefully that are not marred up, are shouldn't damage the shaft, but if you start over tightening and then allow the shock to spin inside of the shock pliers, you could end up causing like micro ribs to happen on the, uh, on the shock shaft. And then when that portion of the shaft travels into those O-rings, you'll start tearing them. And then you end up with oil everywhere. Don't use wire strippers. Oh, <laughs> saw that once. That's a, I mean, I've used, I've used regular pliers before, um, like with a piece of rubber or cloth in the, in the, uh, jaws, but carefully. I built the O-rings around the shaft, then slide into the bot. I build the O-rings around the shaft and slide in. Yeah, I could see that too. Um, as long as you're not putting the O-rings on, as long as you're not putting the shaft through the O-rings when they're under compressive force, I think you're fine. Uh, it shouldn't matter either way at that point. You're still putting the O-ring over the shaft at least once. With And as long as, again, as long as it's without any compression, you should be fine. I use mini channel lock pliers, zero damage yet. Yeah, I would still want to use a, a uh, some sort of thing in the jaw of those. Aluminum should be softer than a steel shaft, but if you're using like channel locks, which I'm assuming are steel, you you have a little bit of a little bit of concern. John Darigan, I'm he's at Axial Fest. Just got back to the campsite from the night run. Hope you're uh, hope you're dry. Hope your rigs are dry. How's the how's the weather been? I'm sorry, but I'm not using any tool on my shaft. Hardy har har. So yes, hope any of you guys who are at Axial Fest are having a grand old time. Stay as dry as possible. Uh, 
Um, okay, what is up there? We've got two without flanges and two with flanges. Got to be difficult, don't they? Oh, they're different for rears and fronts. God. There's so many little differences from like one side of a part to another on this car. That's just odd. Like if they have, these are the rear upper, or sorry, the, the upper portion of the shock. Like why, why is there different from front to rear? Why did they not just match that? The mounts should have been the same width. Such odd choices. What weight oil am I thinking? I find the rear end of mine kind of lively. Yeah. Um, I mean, a trailing arm car in general will be lively. Um, I usually don't like to go too heavy on a trailing arm car because, you know, it just, how all of that functions, I usually find I like that. I usually go a little bit lighter than I do on a normal solid axle setup. Not for sure events, but it seems like people are camped out all the time. I always see rigs and tents when I go crawling. As far as up in uh, Donner, I, if that's what you're referring to, yeah, I mean, it does seem like people are camped out up there all the time. So I have a hard time feeling like they're going to have much of a chance of curtailing that. Okay. I'm not going to use the point, but I'm going to use my picks, the side of it at least, to get it down around the cap because it's kind of a odd setup. All right. Well, at this point, we got to fill them, right? Let's see. I have my shock oil carousel. Uh, I'm probably just going to go. We're going to go uh, 50 in the rear, 60 in the front. A little heavier, but not, not crazy. So a little bit lighter though. Proline by the fire. What about what about Proline by the fire? Oh, that PLBTF is Proline by the fire. Hat and shot. Yeah, sorry about that. It happens when I concentrate. Go with a normal one. When I oh, I think I still got my bladder on. Okay. All right, let's get these. Let's see. These are an emulsion shock, so we're not trying to get all the air out. Right. Oh, do I have my? I do. Stand. Now, granted, my desk is getting messy at the moment, but one shock. Two shocks. There we go. Again, 50 in the rear. We're going to go 60 up front. Just a little heavier up front. But with the... Uh, 
There we go. Let's put a cap on that other rear one. Now these are bleeder caps, so putting it on with the shock full compression. And then we'll put the screw in. What was it when I was live? Was I live building the cap? No, I was live SEX 10 3. God, I can't remember which one I was live building, but I forgot it was a bleeder cap and went and just splooged oil. Their shock oil we're not using. Do I? Where? Oh, there's E7. It was the 10 3. Yeah, that's right, because I had the body pre-painted before. I did that shock, shock oil everywhere. So. And we got very tiny washers stuck in this bag. Okay. And just leave them in it if we have to. PS410 incision shocks, 80 weight oil. I use, uh, I've been using 90 in mine for the most part for quite a while. I like 90. How many live builds is this? Mike, Jay, that's a pretty good question. Um, I haven't missed many Friday nights, but I also haven't done new kits every single Friday. But man, I bet I've done. What do you guys guess? I mean, it's been like 18 months, probably. I bet I've done close to 40 new kits in that time. I wonder. I don't know. Barely any retraction. It should be nice and neutral. Oh, let's build another cap first. 45. Yeah, it's got to be right in that range. Which is a lot of kits, man. That has been an absolute ton of kits. Come on. Okay. How many have I kept? Ooh, versus sold. Um, that was a great question. So, oh, I need to, I forgot, I didn't want to pull that down. Okay. Um, I bet if I've done, say even 40, um, if I've done 40 or whatever, then I'm guessing that I've kept half of them. And the other half have either been sold or weren't my kits in the first place. Like I was building them for somebody else. So this one is taking forever. Hurry up. I think that what we'll find is that the end of this one is going to go very quickly. Because we've done all these boring ass, tedious parts. And then the chassis is going to go together and all the rest of the parts are done. It's just going to go, whoosh. it's just going to fall together. All right, so now we're gonna do 60 weight for the front, which we have already opened. Hopefully a little bit heavier oil than stock will help keep that this beast a little more a little more predictable. Okay, next shock. Or got crushed by the box boy. Oh, I think that was only one of them. And that was a 
That was an accident. Yeah, you know. My bad. But then we've also had some ones that weren't, like I said, weren't kit builds that were very fun. The Flex Seal truck, which is up there, which is the one that Phoenix in here went and picked up from the guy who Flex sealed it. As he's asked me to clarify, clarify before, Phoenix did not build that or flex seal it, I should say. He simply played courier very generously for me. Okay, there we go. These caps and O-ring setups, very odd, very odd. Flex Seal is a legend. I know. The whole I'm super still super pissed that my outboard motors got refunded. I'm gonna have to find another more reliable source for that. I see that they weren't even available on Amazon anymore. Okay. There's that tiny O-ring flex seal truck because Nicole the most fun. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, she just could not believe the level of bad decisions I was making, which is difficult even for me. What do you think about the over about overdrive in a bomber? Um, I've I've touched about that before. I think I've uh, I've showed that in some of my previous bomber setups. Um, I, I liked running overdrive in a bomber, not too much if I was trying, most of the time I was trying to keep my bombers with some speed. And if I was trying to keep speed, I didn't want too much overdrive. Hello from Philly. What's going on? How is the RC scene in the Philly area? I always wonder with like the like big cities like that, like what kind of like I know, you know, Matt's in like in Toronto and I know it's it's tough in, you know, his area for the the amount of trekking he has to do to go somewhere and all that. But dead. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, are your bleeder screws have gaskets or O-rings? They're little tiny clear O-rings. See a little thing? Very tiny. You don't want to <laughs> collapse that piston too quickly. Otherwise, you will end up wearing your shock oil. I think I want to do an ultra 5k style setup, but not really sure where to look for advice. Um, when I did my last one, uh, that's kind of like the style I would build for a 5k. I mean, I built it after Casey Child's style, um, and he's kind of like one of those hardcore 5k people. So. All right, so we need to put the see front gets the yeah, again come on get out of there wide in the top I think flex seal had one of the highest amount of live viewers I think so as well it was definitely a one of those kind of momentum nights. Okay, and then the lower side gets the 
Flex Seal was a chat party. Yeah, that whole thing. God, such a. It just it that truck didn't end. There just kept being one thing after another of of train wreck to look at. Okay, rear flangeless at the top. I think it needs flangeless at the bottom too. Maybe the front gets, I don't know. These instructions, the, oh yeah, the front does get weird. I'm a flex sealer shock shafts on my VS410. <laughs> You know what? Sometimes you just gotta, if you're gonna do it, if you're gonna go flex seal, just go the whole way. Will there ever be another flex seal truck? Oh God, I, I have to, we have to, I mean, will there, I hope that there's not another flex seal truck, but I've recently tried to buy some train wrecks, you know, with the intention of knowing that they're a possible train wreck. However, that I think that there's a chance for. Easiest kit and fastest kit I've ever built. Ooh, that's a that's a good question. Easiest and fast. Man. Um, I would I would say maybe an SCX 10. Well, like SCX 10 twos, really. SCX 10 2 or SCX 10 2 raw builders kit. I can fly through those. I could probably almost do one of those without probably do one of those without instructions in under two hours. CR 18, that one. Oh, you're right. The Adam, like if we kind of get into some of those, like that CR 18 was mostly assembled was the problem. It felt, felt like that was cheating basically. I mean, SCX 10 2, yeah, it's just so easy, but it's it's still just like one of the best kits. Go. This seat all the way down. It did not. The shock, the retainer that they have on these shocks is like a real click. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a satisfying click, but the good news is, is that we are done with shocks. Now we can get on to parts of the build that don't suck. Yep, sounds like Friday Night Live. Two hours, no instructions, 10-2 build. <laughs> Bowling, 10 minutes. <sighs> yes. Now, I'm not... That is the thing. There are some of those ones that basically come assembled. Most guys don't even know where the, where the clip is. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Okay, time for the cage. Bag F. Yeah. How long does it take you to assemble a VS410? Um, I've done it so many times, but I think it's still over three hours, possibly almost four. There's just a lot to a VS410. If you've ever assembled a VS410, there's just like, there's a lot more plastic where, you know, like a chassis brace. If a chassis brace in a car is normally an ounce, in a VS410, it's three ounces. 
hat. There we go. F8. Ooh, speaking of, F9, Fast and Furious 9 is coming out soon. I'm excited. Uh, let's see. What's the ball joint clip to get them in? Wait, what? What's the ball joint clip to get them in? I don't know what you mean. Say that again. Rephrase that. Say that in a different way. That jerky looks lonely. Stick your fingers. <laughs> For I think that while well, eating that stuff, my I must have been clenching my jaw because I can feel it. That's it. Feel my TMJ kicking in. Whatever that's called. Something like that. Asking about the shock pliers, I think. Oh, you're talking about these things that I'm using? These are a super old pair of hot racing shock pliers. I've had these things for like 10 or 12 years. You can see I've like hit them with the belt sander, like when I use them to hold things. And But there's tons of shock pliers available. Um, and uh, there, it's definitely, it's definitely something to have. I highly suggest having a pair of shock pliers in your toolbox. Doesn't really matter what brand though. I mean, those are nice because they have like a specific area to pop a tool out uh, or pop a, a rod end ball out, but it's not necessarily the thing I use the most. And I don't use it to install rod end pivot balls because it's easier to like push them all the way through, which is kind of a pain. So we are not dying our plastics on this one. How do you feel about the jerky the next morning? It has not affected me before. And generally those types of things don't affect me. The only thing that affects me is like if I go for Thai food, because if I go Thai food, I'll go somewhere and I'll get, like depending on what they call it, I'll usually order their Thai hot, which is usually their hottest, like the hottest they'll do in, in the restaurant. And sometimes, that one, I'll be able to tell. But um, ch -ch -ch -ch, this F, no, that's F9. So that's not even for that one yet. Driver's heads, we are not going to install because we have to paint that still. The interior, that is F4. F7. F4. Man, I cannot believe how many individual bags for steps they did in this kit. I don't hate it at all. It, as far as like keeping things organized and not hunting for screws, it's been epically simple. It's just, I'm really surprised at the freaking number. <laughs> We've cut open more bags tonight than almost any kit I've ever done. What hex drivers for your cordless do you use? Uh, does MI MIP de absolutely does make some. I, however, am using the uh, Traxxas like, Master Set, and it's fantastic. The reason I like it is that it comes with the uh, standard tip and the ball end version of the 3.0, the 2.5, and the 2.0, which is a little bit more rare to see.
Good night, sir. Go, go, gadget. Nice. Good night. Uh, I think Josh needs to paint more. I'm attempting to hand paint into. I should paint more. That is true. But I just have so many other things. What is Phoenix? I used to fill 124th models with Zippo fluid and throw black cats at them till they blew. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Phoenix, has anyone ever like closely examined you? I mean, if we're starting a lot, if we're starting a list of people to examine, Jesse should definitely be first, but you should be on standby. F5. How do we get to F5? Oh, wait, this is. So like this bag is labeled F3, but it it's, there's three F bags. And then inside each of those, there's like, See what I mean? How bizarre this thing is. Like that means there's going to be two F3 back. One is technically going to be, I think, F3 and one is F-3, but still. Okay. So we are doing the nose of the chassis. Chessy. So front, we got this little guy. It's going to go there. 116 is a 12 mil. That's, that feels like a, four, yeah, that's a 12 mil. Overly complicated systems. Absolutely. Have you ever seen a TRX-4 with red cat portals? Ooh. Um, no. And I I think I would much rather see TRX-4 portals under... Red cat portals, not that strong. TRX-4 portal, pretty strong. Um, TRX-4, I would... I think I prefer a TRX... Oh, the TRX-4 parts in every way more than more than the the red cap parts 510 is 235110 that is the 16 mils longer longer um Okay. So we got that. We're not going to put in the battery like adjustment plates because I'm not, for one, I don't know if, what size battery exactly I'm running. And I also don't know if I need them at all. I don't think that I use them at all in my in my RTR. So, yeah. Let's see. A video on grinding the stops on a TRX4 portal to improve steering would be good. Um, could be, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. The TRX4 is kind of built in with the proper amount of angle. If you start going past that, you're gonna start binding up the joints of the CV axles. And then that's when you put a, a, like a bending force on them and then you'll start breaking shafts easily. So I wouldn't recommend grinding on that too much. You might be able to get a couple of degrees cause they probably built in a small amount of factor of safety. Uh, but in general, I would, I would uh, advise against it. 18, that's this one, 18 millimeter, that's through the, through the nose.
Okay, there's that. Then we got five tens, which are 16 mils. Gosh, you're ignoring gray. Oh, what gray man I say? <laughs> I'm not ignoring. I'm just not looking up. Um, that is what I was thinking too. Uh, so if I wanted to use a Polar Pro stubby in a VS410 chassis with three gear and TRX four axles, what KV would you recommend or maybe a different motor? Uh, no, I mean the the motor is still, you run anything. I still run, I mean, almost all my motors are 2,700 to 3,000 KV in that range. Uh, the big thing is, is that you just need to make sure you do the math and then adjust the pinion and spur of the transmission accordingly. I've got an act, I've got a video like specifically on exactly that setup you're talking about. Um, cause I did that exact setup on a blue power wagon and it was great. Uh, Novak is gone, ain't they? Yeah. Novak went out of business in like 2015 ish. And there is another, another one. And there's another. So we are getting there. Probably better on that view now. Probably all looking the same from the top. F7. Um, thank you. I waste. <laughs> Sorry, gray matter fab. Oh, of course, and it doesn't show up. How far up was it? Man, I must have been concentrated. There it was. I'm glad somebody got my attention. I apologize. <laughs> Great matter. He never texts me back, so I think it ignores me there too. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're not saved in my phone now, you're tech. I had to turn on, I'm started getting like crazy spam messages through my text. Have you guys started getting that yet? It's freaking crazy annoying. So I had to turn on the whole, like, if not in your uh, contacts, then it just goes to a folder thing. Because honestly, I, I was just getting, and they were coming at like three in the morning and Granted, I, my phone's on Do Not Disturb, so I didn't hear it, but like, ugh, it's awful. Uh, I got the first brushless crawler set up when the whole hobby was changing over. I never, I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> the the uh, the Novak crawler system, I do remember that. That one, that one needed a little more work. 121 is the longboard, 30 mil. There's a 30 mil, then we've got 18s in here and back here wait where does this one go not there oh, the lower portion of that one little confusing <laughs> josh i'd like to talk to you about your car warranty <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like 
the the bigger problem is like I get so many phone calls for work that I can't not answer my phone, but the text message thing is the worst. Okay, we got half a rift chassis looking like something. And we need bag F8. F8's a little guy. Joel Young, thank you, sir. No question? Question, question. I won't I won't ignore it like I was purposefully ignoring gray matter fabs. <laughs> Gonna dye that mofo orange just because they sent the damn black one. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should go through all the trouble to dye this cage just so. <laughs> just because they sent me the black one the first time. Okay. There we go. That and these go from the. Bottom up. Uh, that felt, I think that was too short. Yeah, that was the 10 mil when I needed the 14. Just throw that around. I'm going to watch Idiocracy after this. I hopefully Matt watched it. We did not discuss. I did. Oh, he did ask something. Look back a bit. All right, I will do that. Uh, Joel, uh, I was wanting to add one of your rigs to my collection. What is the better one between the VS410 Ultra and the VS410 Pro, and why? So really, it comes down to if you like portals or you don't. But the uh, there is some other differences. The VS410 Pro does have a little bit more suspension travel because it runs 90 millimeter shocks instead of 80s. The Ultra runs 80 millimeter shocks to try and keep the ride height um, at a little bit better spot uh, because the portals lift up. So kind of combating that with, um, with the little bit shorter shock. Then the uh, transmission gear, In the uh, in the VS410 Pro, the inside gears of the the Pro transmission are all machined, versus uh, centered in the Ultra, and you get a little bit more steering out of the Pro. But in the end, if you really want portals, the portals that come on the the Ultra, it's the only way to go. So that's the big thing. Lots of little differences that add up. The Pro has um, the Pro also has a machined motor mount and machined posts that are on the transmission. They don't really make a, a big uh, performance difference. They're just there. It is nice to have a metal motor plate versus the molded one, but you know, for heat dissipation and the uh, then the screws also don't you know embed into the plastic. I'm gonna leave the interior out. Come on. What would be my choice? Uh, I So I have both, but that being said, the Pro is my preference. It's the one that I prefer driving the most. I like the style of the axles better. Uh, I like the way that it handles. I like the, you know, the suspension travel more. Just... Everything about the Pro is just a little bit more my preference. But um, okay. 
Mm. Getting through it. Will the 80 millimeter sh uh, incision shocks be restocked? Yes, shortly. Shortly, shortly. I could never justify the price of the Curry axles alone for a couple hundred extra dollars. I could get the whole truck. No, bro. yeah. I mean, that is, that is one of those things, you know, you can buy a set of just complete Vanquish uh, Curry portals and they'll cost you about 500 bucks, but a little bit more, you end up getting the whole rest of the truck. The value is there. Getting all the cage points to line up in one of these trucks. It's kind of funny how you really kind of got to get everything into position yourself. Okay. Uh, which are those rear screws? Both are 120s, which are 25 mils. That's that. That looks like a 30. What do I have a 30 here for? 25. Oh, that's that 30. Is this is 18 or 25. I can't trust the manual for scale. That was wrong. Okay. Now we're cooking. How much we got left? 109. Still an oddball. So many different length screws in here. Different length screws in a cage like this is something that it's not a huge deal. It just takes time to go through and check them all, but with a little bit of forethought, you can not have that situation and then everything's just better. Do better. Okay, where else does an 18 go? Up in the very front. That. Fourteen, where another 18. 18, 18, 5, 10, 16. Got different length ones all over the place. Question is, how many clear bodies do you bring on Sunday? Ooh, moose job. You interested in a rift? <laughs> Let's see. Moose job, what do I have for clear bodies here right now that are in need? That is a damn good question. That, all right, I have three more screws here. There's that one. And there's the other two. Definitely a lot of screws in this thing, but I do like this cage. I think they did a good job. If they would have 
cleaned up all those screw length, that would have been great. But not the end of the world. All right. Now it's time to open up F3 so we can get F11. No Nicole tonight? Nope. Nicole is in Charleston, South Carolina. She is there for a bachelorette party. She did just call me, though, so I imagine things didn't get too wild, even though it was a Friday night on a bachelorette party weekend, which is hard to believe. A cool place to visit. You know what? I've only flown through. I've never, never stayed. Say hi to her. She's in, she's in your town. Where you go? She, oh, want me to say hi. <laughs> I don't know where they're at. They're on the beach somewhere. They've got a beach house. It's already nine o'clock. Did she call to say, don't buy a scout? <laughs> don't buy another scout, right? Folly or IOP? I don't know what either of these things mean, DK. Could you put a rift gauge on a party or AR 44s and look fine to make a crawler? Ooh, man, I don't know. I do not know if that would be, I think with the long wheelbase set up and everything, I think that you'd be, it would just look off. That cage looks huge. It is huge. It's a big cage. There's no denying that. I mean, the Rift is a big car. You know, it's got six inch tall tires on it. I'm setting mine up sand drag style. That could be interesting. Charleston is nice. Folly Beach is it is the place to party. Aha. What year in model is my set? It's a 66, 800. Or 60. Yeah, 66. I think. Oh, Moose Jaw, I do have the uh, Woods Runner body. Like, I think we kind of decided that other night could be getting some paint on that thing early would maybe make for much better uh, motivation for me. Might be a good idea. Are you in for that? Vidjo, what's going on, sir? Isn't it late for you? You're not usually on the late stream. Okay. Son of a biscuit. Okay. Sway bar is on. Yes, you're in for it. Perfect. I will bring the woods runner. I'm just going to give it to you complete. Because the panels are separate. So probably best to just hand it over like that. Little tight, can't clamp it down too much. A little freer, let's give it a quarter turn on each. All right, then we've got to put a 
pivots on this thing. 912. This is going to be one of our longer streams. Hopefully we're I'm done by 10. I got stuff to do tomorrow. And I still want to stay up and play a video game for a minute. Maybe. I need to figure out. Does anybody play Beam MG? NG? Was it? It's one or the other. Anyway, I think that they do. They fig, they've got multiplayer going on that now. Anybody know? Random question for that. Should I ask Ben what color he wants for it? Ha, ha, ha. I think we decided on that champagne ish color. Like my old scout. I can send you, there's photos. What, no cat butts? I know, they haven't come in here at all, which is crazy. They're usually at least wandering in and around. They like walk through my shelves over here. All right. I'm okay with whatever Josh chooses. <laughs> Okay, so sway bars on, blocks are on, links on, F13 is for body panels. That sounds like a moose jaw bag. All right. We got drive shafts, and then we get to put the axles and links on. There's drive shafts. <laughs> so we we're gonna finish this on Sunday. You know what, Phoenix? I'm I'm I was super close, but no Sunday streams anymore. We axed to the Sunday stream. And I'm going to I'm gonna keep myself to that for a while. Cause I had a productive Sunday last week since I canceled the stream. Gave me a chance to focus on doing inventory of this room, which is oh so boring, but I'm telling you. I, I, I almost know everything that I have in my shop now and how that's possible. I'll tell you what, it's scarier than anything, really. Are you going to pull out the two, two wheels I need for the, uh, Phoenix, I, uh, set the, I set some aside for you on that. Um, yeah. So. I've got, I've got what you need. The, uh, yeah, very set, very set there. Nothing is as satisfying as having a detailed or inventory. It's really not. What, what the fuck? Inventory? <laughs> when you turn into Matt, I know I was, I was a little jealous of Matt's setup, but I'm telling you what, it's a uh, spreadsheet makes it official. Ooh, I found an app and nothing is more official than an actual searchable database let me tell you oh it was it's a it's a nice one inventory have you told your insert how much you have invested in that room uh well i mean that's a good reason to have it is because i do have an additional additional policy sap and a database <laughs> oh we got ben we got ben peaked up he's like oh you you want to talk about some some software some database software well, what can I help sell you? <laughs> uh, so, yes. And uh, so I bought a bunch of uh, Craftsman storage bins that what Lowe's has because they fit my shelves perfectly. And I can fit four across the top 
or four across each row, basically. And then I labeled with my label maker, which box one, box two, box three, box four. So they don't have to be like organized exactly what's in the box. Like it doesn't have to be just electronics in this box and just that it can just be, as long as I know what box it's in, I'm good. And it is amazing. Amazing, Grace. Okay, drive shafts are built, kind of. Now it's time to assemble them onto an axle. Can we see those bins? Um, yes, you can. After, maybe after I, if I get, my thought is I need to get the axles on this truck. Because I'm obviously not going to use their wheels. So I need to get the axles on the truck. And that will be a good, I think that will be the good point for the night. Maybe drive shafts, maybe, or sorry, uh, shocks. I have the axial deadbolt and I want to upgrade the shocks. What would you recommend? Do you have the axial deadbolt SCX-10, SCX-10-2, or the axial deadbolt AX-10? That's the big question. They made the deadbolt in three different variations. So we have questions that we need to answers to. Okay, so there's that. Now I need links. Front upper link, front lower link. Which length were they though? I gotta go all the way back. Eh, I bet I can guess. So those are gonna be uppers. These are gonna be lowers. Those are gonna be rear. Axle side. Okay. We're gonna have all the screws here. Oh, and the SCX-24 deadbolt. Dang, you're right, there was four. Um, you have the SCX-10 too. Okay, so basically uh, just any 90 millimeter shock that you know you like. I run incision ones mainly for 90 mil stuff, uh, but there's lots of options. So that's, uh, that's the good news there. You've got the, the most popular one with the most options, so. The world is your oyster. Okay, and a lock nut. I'd rather have a honcho, but I'd take a deadbolt three. Oh, you know what? I've got, a, I bought a couple of honchos and uh, a, I always liked the honcho, but I'll tell you what, the SCX-102 honcho has is an aging plat is an aging body style. Like it is not like the front bumper hangs out there a long way. Like if we had that now, we would be much less um, happy with it than when we w first got it. <laughs> Energy high mass bead looks bad idea on a rift. A bad idea for many reasons. Yes, don't do that. Um, when you can avoid integer at all costs, but Beyond that, high mass on a truck like the Rift is also a bad idea. You don't want a heavy, a heavy truck like this, like a rock bouncer like this. Heavy is bad. I mean, honestly, it, I don't really have like almost none of these. I don't think I have a single truck that's probably even over eight pounds, except for the truck that I'm making heavy on purpose. Beyond that, having a truck over eight pounds is, it just decreases your performance. It's harder on parts. Um, yeah, I just, now the one thing is, is that like TRX fours are just, he they're heavy. A TRX four, that Bronco in factory form was heavier than my VS410 Pro with aftermarket aluminum wheels, which is pretty wild. But 
Um, so TRX4s are going to be a little heavier, but man, if you're getting up over nine, like you're getting pretty heavy. Oh my God, this is still live. I guess I'm back then. Yep, but we're getting there. This axle is done and we're going to set it aside for a second while we assemble the rear axle now. How did I not install that yet? Oh, that goes on with the skid plate. That makes sense. Um, all right, so. Put those on the wrong sides. I blame the instructions. I swear I looked at that in the instructions, purposefully read it out loud. And I obviously either messed it up or the instructions were wrong. My guess is I messed it up. All right. Is Energy the outfit that sells Chankwish wheels? Um, not really. I think, I mean, Energy just sells them themselves, their own wheels. But, you know, that's all, all made the same thing. It's all made in the same place with that stuff. I think that the three needs a intro level offering like the honcho and deadbolt have always been uh, Andrew. I totally agree there. Um, and honestly, I think it needs, it needs one without portals to try and, you know, make it that in. Cause when you add portals, you know, you're adding eight extra gears. Like that's a lot of gears. Um, you know, so that raises costs. You add extra, you know, four extra shafts, uh, extra bearings, you know, it brings the cost up significantly. So yeah, I think that they need, they need to throw the straight axle kit under something and just do some cost cutting. And I, I always liked that the, the deadbolt had a little bit more high approach angle body. So I think that, you know, it was always tucked up, has a little bit of a pinch. Still one that I like. But I 100% agree with that date. There we go. All right. And shorter wheelbase compared to the stretch Jeep. I could. I'd be fine with, I like long wheelbase cars, honestly. So, I mean, 12.3, 12.8, anywhere in there, I'm, I'm good with it. But I never, like the fact that the deadbolt came with the 12.0 was never something I enjoyed. I always preferred the more standard, longer wheelbase. So... If there was anything that they did, I would hope that it would be to go to the 12.3 wheelbase. Okay. Uh, are you going to replace the trailing arms with metal eventually? Eventually, yes. Um, I would imagine so. But once, uh, once we get some done at Vanquish. <laughs> Until then, I'll probably make these work because I, I I do not want to run rod end style ones because I just they're always twelve o wraith one point nine is pretty capable also the the one point nine wraith is very capable I just would much much more prefer a twelve three setup. Right, we've got, we're getting close now. How many times have I been saying that? He'd better get to move. Matt, 
Thank you for joining in again. It's past your bedtime. But the good news is, is that I'm nearing completion. We're three and a half hours in. Yeah, how did I, how's this taking me so long when Matt got his done and dyed the colors? I mean, just the time to watch the water boil. You know. Don't make me join you in my under. <laughs> Matt, feel free to, to just go ahead and just Skype in anytime that you're you're decent. You know, beyond that, I'm gonna ask you to keep that phone in your well, I guess you won't have any pockets on. <laughs> Come on. There we go. We're gonna set it up neutral, kind of mid point on the link risers. There we go. Almost. Uh, have you given any thought to a video about builder hardware screws, spacer, standoffs, rod, etc., that you use and recommend? Hmm. Um, I haven't given any thought to a, a video specifically about something like that. Little cooking show magic. Exactly. I think he faked the whole thing, did you? I think he like pretended he dropped the car and it just popped back up on his bench. Painted, dyed chassis. All right, front suspension is on. And time to do the rear. I'm glad I put the uh, links in the, the lower links on the correct sides because I wasn't paying attention and that was pure luck. Has he built the shocks yet? Yes, Matt, the shocks are done. I know I don't always build the shocks, but I did this time. Okay. Did he put oil in it? I did. They're filled, they're bled, well, they're an emulsion shock, so they're not really bled, but still. Okay. We were one off on our phasing, get that fixed. Okay. Assembled, not built. No, <laughs> wait. What's that supposed to mean? Down to my last fresh X Acto knife. Dang, Moose Jaw, you're down to your last one. Like, not to, like for me, I'd have to pick some up in the next two, three months then. You gotta, you gotta make those blades last. I mean, if I'm not getting a solid two months out of one of those, I'm, I got concerns.
get in the pocket. Damn, drive shaft fell out. Is that phased? Yes. There we go. Okay. Get in the hole. Too good for your hole? Answer me. <laughs> okay. One last link, then shocks. Throw it on there. third hole up from the bottom. We're moving. Now we install this guy. This goes on here. And it says we use three flathead screws from the bottom. G6, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's a, that one's a ways back, but wait. Come on. Tell you what, this receiver box, bit of a pain in the butt, no matter when you're working on it. Those really trans look especially like Yeti arms with plates on it. They look very similar, but they are 10 millimeters longer. And the pivot balls are larger, so do not get your hopes up. There's nothing about them that's actually the same at all. I thought the same thing when I started. Okay. Now. G10 and 11, where's G8? Did I skip that one? No. It's just Lexan. There it is. What electronics am I installing? Well, I'm not today. Um, so I've got some time to decide. I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't planning on this build today. I just went into RC country, my local hobby shop on my way home from work and picked it up. So I hadn't really put any thought into what electronics I'm going to run yet. I was actually pretty happy with the factory electronics in the rift. Um, as far as the uh, motor went. The sensorless stuff didn't bother me at all in this type of rig with how it ran. That shove the gasket in, lid on. Have you run the TRX six yet again? That is our plan for Sunday. Moose Jaw's coming with me, um, and I believe that Gunner is going to meet us out there as well from Satisfied Jerky. And 
Uh, Moose Jaw is going to help film. And I'm probably going to bring my Traxxas Drag Slash and have him drag race me with my own car. Wear a helmet. I, I will be planning my positioning carefully. Okay. That, now it's the cage time. Drops right on. G9. Run the drag slash with the bends. That's the plan. Yes. Okay, so side gets all the same 109s, which are 14 mils. I've been throwing most, not all the bags in the box behind me. Um, and <laughs> The amount of bags in this box is insane right now. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Cage looks bright white on camera. Yeah, it does. It's I could adjust my white balance, but it's actually a very light gray. It's not far from white, but I don't hate it, the color as it is. So, but I've got big studio lights around me, so it makes all the lighting seem a little different. Who was it that was building this kit at the same time as watching? I wonder if they're still watching. Wonder how far they got. <laughs> All right, cage is on. Those four. Oh, there's two down from the top. These. They walked away from the bench at the shocks, left them to bubble out and build tomorrow. Oh, there you go. <laughs> They're out running theirs. Thanks, bitch. <laughs> Any recommendations for mods to the Rift? Um, I'm going to run mine all locked. Uh, you know, from there, we'll kind of play it by ear, I think. And like I said, I'm going to lock mine. I'll probably start looking at other things then. At, in the not so distant future, I'll be doing uh, new axle housings completely, but you know, custom linked. Oh, custom skins. There you go. 12 S it. <laughs> Perfect. Come on, there we go. With already having the 
trailing arm in, it was kind of pinching that lower link mount, making it a little bit more difficult. One side done. If it wasn't r raining, running a truck sounds fun at almost midnight. Running a truck at night is oftentimes fun. I used to go, uh, when I lived in an apartment in Kansas City, there was a cul-de-sac, like in, not really, sorry, not a cul-de-sac. It was a, like a roundabout, actually. Can't remember if it was technically a roundabout or a traffic circle, but in the middle of the complex, and they had rocks around all the uh, inside. So they were like my text, my test rocks. I'd go check each one. Metal axles worth it. They there will be ones that are worth it. And so we're we are working on metal axles. So once we get them dialed in, the ones we we're happy with will be will be set. All right. So G10. You should already have that one. G10. It's like the last bag. It's not, but it should be. Which ones were the... Those are the shorts. And these go to the... Lower... Okay. ready to have this thing on its own feet. Yes. Every step closer. Oh, that's not long enough because we need Perry G, thank you, sir. Options for a divorced transfer case with overdrive. Div How come you're looking for a divorced case specifically, Perry? Um, because like you could technically run a, I mean, you can run an RC four wheel drive setup even and just take the RC four wheel drive transfer case and spin it and run it in one of the outputs. And then you've got a pretty drastic overdrive. Um, so, you know, that would be an option. Let's see those two, two, as soon as you stacked away. <laughs> the fact that you're still awake, Phoenix, is, is almost reason enough to celebrate. Okay, I'll bite. What's the difference between a roundabout and a traffic circle? <laughs> So I'm glad you asked. I'm glad Nicole's not here right now so that she can't stop me from explaining this either. A roundabout, the people inside of the inside of the circle have the right of way. So as there's people coming around it, someone's coming up, they have to wait until the person in the circle goes or exits. Then in a traffic circle, there'll be a circle, but like there'll be a street that has the right of way. So someone in the circle might have to come and wait for this traffic to keep going and then so yeah, there's a difference. That, that is what it is. And I'm pretty sure the one in the apartment complex was a traffic circle, not a roundabout. I'm telling Nicole you're talking about this for sure, though. Right. Sorry, not at all for a second. <laughs> and get in there. 
demonstrate knowledge. <laughs> anybody, any other obscure, uh, nearly useless traffic facts anybody needs? I was thinking cul-de-sac, not around. Oh, wait, wait, what? Where was that actual? Did you have a previous question of that? The transfer case is for the bastard junior. It's funky. Man, that would be, yeah, but the problem with divorce transfer cases is that they, they end up taking up so much more room usually since you have to have a, another motor, then a space between it, then a transfer case. Why is it so expensive to time traffic lights? Phoenix, that is a great question. So to time a traffic light, to time a single light, not that difficult, but it's doing a timing plan because generally traffic signals should be interconnected to one another and then to a network. So one street should be timed and then it should also have all the cross streets. So they should time to the lights and it's this big grid and it should all work together. And it's very difficult to get that all to work out. It can take hundreds and hundreds of hours to work out a city timing plan. That is something, thankfully, that I never had to do. I was not a timing person because that was very boring and not something I wanted to. Oops. I don't even know if this screws on or not. Yes, it is. There we go, lined up. No! Let's sit there. Any small tire builds in the future? I think that I will build a dedicated class one um, after after nationals or nationals, Rooks Roja. I had a lot of fun. I definitely want to have a class one that I can go take and be competitive with um, because competing is fun. So it will likely be something on the competitive side more so than something super scale. Just tell me you agree with me why DDI is the best. DDIs are the best. And people who don't know what a DDI is, it's a diverging diamond interchange. And But diverging diamond interchanges, that's when the, you're going down the road and then all of a sudden you get to an interchange and you cross to the other side between the two signals and then you cross back. There's a very specific reason to them though. And they only work in certain applications. They have to be a very specific intersection type where most of your traffic is either entering or exiting the highway. If it's mainly through traffic through an intersection, it's not the right application. You shouldn't use it. Someone's shooting fireworks. Not supposed to be doing that here. It's so dry in California. I remember last year when Matt and I were doing the T-Rex 6 videos the first time, there was all the smoke and ash in the air from the fires. I'm guessing this year is going to be way worse. It's going to be a bad one. It's so dry in California already. I don't care. They're stupid. <laughs> the nice thing about DDIs is that if you're getting on or off the interstate, you only have to go through one light. You have a free movement otherwise. What about the Michigan U-turn? That's when you go past and then you do a U-turn in the center so that you can make a left-hand turn, right? 
they're called different things in different places. Um, there's like, yeah, Michigan U-turns, or they're called, they're in most places, they call them J-turns. What is that? <laughs> Big old pieces of plastic wedged into the shock towers. It's like they were having a shrinking problem with the plastic. So they wedge spacers in there to try and keep them in place during shipment. They are called J-turns here. Yeah, in most places they call those J-turns, not Michigan U-turns. Um, but yeah, those can be handy in areas where, um, specifically it, it signals where you have a lot of accidents that you use those. Why don't we have flying cars yet? My transportation professor in college was named Dr. Musabi and he worked with NASA on the study of flying cars, but not how to build flying cars, but like what it would actually take to have a, a system or like how would functioning cars actually, you know, function in our society? You know, like where would you land them? Where would they fly? Do they need to be skyways like there are for planes? Like planes don't actually just fly anywhere. They fly on dedicated paths. You know, it's like, how do we do that with flying cars? It's... Mother. All right. It sits. It is. It is a truck. Kind of. It's missing stuff. But we got through the truck part. Honestly, I think that's all that's happening tonight. 9.54. It's 10 o'clock. You guys were awesome. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out so late for such a long stream. I will find wheels to mount the tires. I will drop off the body to Moose Jaw. Um, yeah. Oh, Ben, I had those boxes. Oh. Ugh. Let's. This is the box. It comes with a lid. I don't have the lid on it. Um, but yeah, like this one. See, box one it says right there. And uh, this one, this is a box of like just electronics. That's, <laughs> it's, it is, it is quite silly with, but this is why I needed to do it. Cause like the other day when we were on the live stream with Matt, I had said I like picked up like five of the of ESCs to have for like some of the more basic builds and things like that. And I was just like, I really need to put them in an area where I'm going to know what to do. Uh, but then when I was doing that and like putting it all together and you know, organizing, I found like three more of them that I had already got. It's like, oh, dang it. Yeah, that's, that's why I needed to inventory so that I knew what I had. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this box. So that. This is why I did it, but I know everything that's in this box and it's on my phone. It's a little app that I go to and I go, uh, to the collect app. I collect, and then I've got all the items and it tells me everything that I've got and how many of each of them I can tell you, or I think, I, I, I wonder if I can maybe just look by location. Can I go sort by bin? Because that's what I called it. Yeah. So I can see everything that was just in like box one. Psh, 
all the things. Now that is nerdy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Gray Matter Fab. Yeah, I can tell you everything. Any Crawlmaster Sport 550 turns? Mike J, let's just say that I didn't know. I could go into the app and go Crawlmaster and then it tells me I have a 540-13 turn, a 540-16 turn, a 540-20 turn, a 558 turn. Uh, so yeah, those I could click on it and it says it I have one in box two. <laughs> so yeah. That is so or so organized. This and I'm so happy to be able to have all of that. What app the app is called I Collect. It's made mainly for um like people with collectible, like either movies or um uh like action figures, stuff like that. Because it also, like when I go to add something, um, like for example, I have this package of, uh, what is this, TRX4 battery plugs. So if I wanted to add this to the inventory, I hit the little plus button in the top and it says, does this item have a barcode? And I hit yes. And then I flip it over and mother, it doesn't have a, oh, that's on the front. Yeah. So then you hold it over. It scans it and it says that is Traxxas connectors mail, populates the photo. And then I would just go through and add the rest of the stuff. Like what look, I'll put it just for, I'm going to put it in box one brand Traxxas, some of this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to put battery plugs. Yeah. I didn't even need all this stuff since it has it, but. It's for my own because sometimes the uh, naming isn't the best. Estimated value. What did I pay for this? Four ninety nine, so five dollars. Back. Quantity one, and there, I'll put it in the box. Save. In inventory. <laughs> I like being organized, even if I'm not the most organized person. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I have a 10 o'clock alarm. Packing for a cash comp tomorrow, and this is still going. Squints, thanks for joining in. Thanks for donating, as always. Don't forget to put it in the box. I put it in the box. It's right next to me. Thanks for nerding out. Um, hope you guys have a good weekend. It was, uh, it was a good one, as always. Tom Kirby Green, thank you, sir. You're joining in right at the end. Much appreciated. If label makers made, <laughs> made my uh, label maker of choice right here, the Dymo Letra Tag. I've had it for like 10 years, probably more. Works like a champ. Love it. I have to go pick up more boxes, though, so that I can keep spreading you guys are awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys hanging out, making chit chat, watching me build another truck. As always, we'll see you whatever, whatever days, days coming up with more videos, having more fun later. Good night. <laughs>